summer, it's like 100 degrees outside, you don't want to be out there roasting your alabaster gamer skin, nah, you want to be inside watching my videos, but also playing some video games. But the thing is, the eShop is such a big and scary place, where you're gonna find 10 good games worth buying. This is 10 more eShop games worth buying, bringing the tally of games to 160, for those of you that aren't bad at math. I used a calculator. If you haven't seen the other videos, well, you got some catching up to do after this one because all of these games today are games that released over the last few weeks to like a month. So they're all the newest, best, hot and freshest eShop games money can buy. So sit your alabaster butt down and let's get started. And by the way, alabaster is not a bad word. However, it does sound a lot like one. It means white, kind of creamy. I'm saying you have white pale gamer skin because we never go outside. I'm the set. Actually, I'm kind of getting a tan. Hi, this is Kim Set. We actually just filmed her very first video. It was really fun actually. We just finished filming it. I'll leave a link down below for it. I was watching her arts and crafts the whole time and I was like, dang girl, where'd you get those skills? If you want to learn how to get as skilled as Kim or me, because I'm also very skilled, click that link in the description and check out Skillshare. Let me tell you about it. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Did I say that wrong? Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial skills. If you want to learn how to be more artistically creative like Kim here, there's plenty of courses on art, like Yuko's ink drawing techniques. Premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. This thing costs $10. It did not. Okay, it didn't. But you get, it's still cheap. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now what can you do with all that money you just saved using Skillshare instead of trying to learn it elsewhere? I'll probably buy some eShop games. Let's talk about some worth buying. Living better Sakurai, super smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell. You guys might remember that around about this time last year, I recommended It'll Do 2. It's adorable, surprisingly fun, has excellent puzzles, charming combat, beautiful visuals, and overall, one of the best Zelda-inspired games you can play. Well, as always in video gaming, about a year after the sequel drops, we finally get the original game. Wait, that's not how it's supposed to work. It'll Do 2 was my first time playing one of these two games. I knew they had improved the art style with a complete overhaul from the first, shifting into 3D and the ability to move diagonally. But now that I'm here, I kind of like the 2D a lot more. Although I am really missing the ability to move diagonally. The art style here in the first one really pops with its use of vibrant colors and a charming hand-drawn art style. I love the way the main character and many of the game's assets have like a moving sketch look to them. I'm not sure what that's called, but it's really cool. It plays and is structured almost identically to the sequel, which is fantastic. As I said, It'll Do 2 was one of the best 2D Zelda inspired games I have played. And not surprisingly, that goes equal for the first game. It still has cute writing with humorous dialogue. You'll spend a lot of your time sliding blocks and solving puzzles. It's way more puzzle focused than Zelda with the combat kind of taking a backseat. Speaking of the combat, it's clunky and unrefined. And I can say that because it was clearly something they worked on and fixed for the sequel. But the puzzles here are just difficult enough to always be fun and rewarding. So for $9.99, that's a yes from me, dog. Can't really pull that off. Eagle Island surprised the heck out of me when I was finally able to play it, as it was published by Screenwave Media, my YouTube MCN. Yep. <laughs> if you don't know what an MCN does, it's okay, it doesn't matter. They essentially help me manage my channel, but what they don't usually do is publish video games. I knew they had Eagle Island in development for a couple years, but I guess I never really expected it to be this good. As I loaded up the game and my network's logo flashed on the screen, I was immediately blown away by the polish of this game. There is no denying this is one of the more gorgeous looking pixel art games I have seen. With such vibrant use of colors, adorable sprites, and a world positively teeming with life. The pools of water have small fish swimming around them, tiny crabs crawling across the ground. The little details in Eagle Island bring the environments alive. But things don't stay adorable for long as a giant eagle crashes down on one of your sweet owl boys and steals it away. That begins the journey to power yourself up and get your little fella back. The gameplay honestly made me take a step back and want to applaud the developer for actually creating something extremely 
unique for a Metroidvania platformer. There are so many elements to platforming and combat that I just haven't seen executed in this way before. Your remaining owl is your key to most of that as you attack by throwing him. And once you hold down the attack button, you'll have a few moments where you can suspend yourself and pick a direction. Kind of reminds me of when you jump up in Breath of the Wild and pull back the bow. It's a pretty cool feeling. You have to make sure your attack lands though, otherwise Mr. Owl, named Koji, will overshoot your target and it will take a couple moments before you can try throwing again. But if you do land your hit, you can throw again almost instantly and start stacking up an attack chain multiplier. And that is key to success in this game. My only complaint is that the dungeons are randomly generated and I was honestly excited to dive into a fully structured campaign here. I was given a mishmash of different layouts every time I died and since none of your items carry over, you need to start again each time. This made the game brutally difficult for me, which isn't a bad thing if you're looking for a challenge here. That being said, there are much easier modes. I recommend not starting on the mode the game recommends and instead opting for a mode that has oh, just a ton more health because you're gonna need it. For 20 bucks, this game is more than worth it. For nothing else, just to marvel at the beautiful pixel art and super cool boss sprites. Oh, there he is. And my network did send me this little guy in a themed box with a bunch of hay and a game code. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, little woodies. That's what I secretly call you guys. Recently, the Switch was doomed with a trio of Doom titles. Doom 93, Doom 2, and Doom 3. But right now, we're going to take a look at Dooms 1 and 2 because, eh, they're pretty much the same. Ish. The story does not matter here, you just play as a guy armed to the teeth with huge honking guns blowing away hordes of demons. You come for the gameplay and you most certainly stay for the gameplay. <laughs> My favorite part about these games are the hidden secrets and rooms in every level. Finding a chainsaw behind a wall is some of the most fun I had as a kid. Playing Doom back on my stupidly big white box of a PC. The Switch versions of these games, they're not the definitive versions as they are missing some small features here and there, but nothing major and for five bucks a piece, it's an easy recommendation. If you've never played either of these before, you have to. The original Dooms are like those classic movies or books everybody tells you you need to watch or read before you die. Media that in its genre helped define an era and lead the way to what we know today. And Doom is certainly that, paving the way for future first person shooters, leading by example and becoming one of the most significant games in video game history. So if you're bored of Doom 2016 on your Switch and you just can't wait for Doom Eternal to drop, then go back to where it all started. Legends say that sometime in the early 1800s, Nintendo announced that at some point in the future, Grandia 1 and 2 will be coming to Switch in a HD collection pack. So we waited, and we waited, and then we waited some more. And then finally, we kept on waiting. <laughs> and then at some point, randomly dropped on the eShop and I completely missed it. Whatever, let's play them. Whether you played these games back on your Seeker Saturn, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, or PlayStation 2, you'll be pleased to know that these games look and play better than ever. In fact, this is their first time in widescreen. Grandia 1, in my opinion, has an almost timeless cartoony charm about it, and honestly, it looks better than a lot of 2D JRPGs that are released even today. And if you got down and dirty with some Final Fantasy HD action recently, you're in for a treat with this pack, even more so if you've never experienced these games before. The combat and overall game structure is very similar to Final Fantasy games, with the only big difference being that the enemy encounters aren't random. Rather, you see them around in real time and you can approach them to battle or try to avoid them if you don't like leveling up your character. Playing these games in a crisp HD is the perfect way to do it if you haven't before. Although, it is pretty pricey. At 40 bucks for the collection, I mean, Final Fantasy 7 was $20, so it's like two of those. Uh, the math does check out, but honestly, I would have preferred 20 bucks for both of them. You can't argue that the value is here regardless, just in the amount of hours you can sink into these games. So if they're worth it to you, go ahead and pick them up. I don't think I've ever counted DLC as an entire spot on one of these lists before, but there's a first time for everything. Especially when that DLC is free and includes three new levels, each with its own boss fight and 18 new original kick butt songs. Yeah, I had to say kick butt. YouTube's cracking down on naughty words. The Messenger had a huge amount of DLC content smashed into it recently, and I saw just about, um, zero people talking about it. So, uh, 
let's do that. I covered the base game in one of these videos already, so I'll link that below. And assuming you have grabbed it and finished it, you'll have access to the free DLC right away. And since the game knows that you already finished the main adventure, it's not gonna go easy on you now. This add-on beach holiday themed content steps up the difficulty quite a bit from the main campaign. The gorgeous 8-bit slash 16-bit game because it can't make its mind up and you dive between both genres and when you do so the music changes as well to 8-bit and 16-bit style music. Somehow this game just became even prettier as your journey continues on a tropical island for a not so relaxing summer vacation. It starts out with a Battletoads reminiscent surfing level. Somewhere in the middle you have to race a Dark Link version of yourself and by the end you'll be super punch out style throwing punches. I need to breathe today. It's challenging, it's fun, and it's free. But what is soon, you may be asking? You talked about Doom 1 and 2, but you left out 3. Are you really gonna ignore the greatest game in the Doom franchise? I'm gonna do it now. So hold your, hold your little alabaster butt for a second. <laughs> I wanted to do this one separate because it's quite different from the first two. And this was actually my first time playing through Doom 3. It was released back in 2004. Doom 3 actually does have somewhat of a story, but honestly, eh. In my opinion, Doom games are much better without any kind of storyline or direction other than just go kill things. Now Doom 3 on the Switch is the definitive edition. It has all the expansions this game ever received, so you ain't missing out on a freaking thing. The gameplay is on point once again, but as I said, mixed up. It's very reminiscent of the first two games, but with survival horror elements spliced into it. So now while you're mowing down demons looking for key cards to open locked doors, you're also creeping down dark hallways with a flashlight hoping a jump scare doesn't smack bang you straight in the face. This absolutely slows down the gameplay that we're all used to across the Doom franchise. It's not inherently a bad thing though. For me, this is like a strange Dead Space cross Doom mashup game and I love it for what it is. But uh, I am absolutely glad they went back to the traditional Doom style in the newer games. Doom 3 runs at a crisp 60 frames on the Switch, so if what you're seeing now looks like something you might enjoy, you probably will. With a brand new fourth installment into the Trine series on the way to Nintendo Switch, it's no surprise that the first three games have already been released. I feel like I have for sure talked about or reviewed one of the first two shrines already, so I'm just gonna focus on the third game today because it released really recently and... Shrine 3 is a creative and unique puzzle platformer and the first in the series to add an overworld map. Visually, I love the way this game looks. Its use of deep blues, purples, and occasional greens really makes the game pop and give me an 80s neon retro feel. Overall, it's a very vibrant game and as you play, you can switch between the three different characters, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Siegfried's brother here is useful in heavy combat situations. Zavaline over there is best for platforming, no surprise. And Dumbledore can manipulate the environment using his magic. Did you get all three of those references? You had to have got the Harry Potter one. Oh, and if you played the first two Trine games, this one branches out the 2D genre and into the 3D. Kinda like it'll do, but different. Allowing you to explore further back and forward into each level. Even though it's tad on the short side, around five to six hours, I would still say it's well worth 20 bucks if it's missing from your eShop collection. But if you haven't played any of these games, honestly, I would recommend waiting because when Trine 4 releases, apparently it's coming out in a pack that has the first three games bundled in. That's like four games for the price of however much that game is. I'm gonna guess 60 bucks. So at this point, while I was planning, writing out the video, downloading games, trying them out and all that business, I had like eight games and I needed two more. And I didn't know what those two were gonna be. And then I realized, oh me, oh my, I forgot about my old tradition of trying to stuff in at least one point and click into each of these list videos. So let's do that. Actually, despite this game setting, finding yourself in the middle of a Cold War, it's a hilarious adventure with all the classic gameplay elements I love from fantastic point and clicks. Nothing about this game is serious. It points fun at itself constantly, not only in the story, but the dialogue, the charming animations, anywhere that it can. Many parts of this game hit me hard with nostalgia for older point and clicks like Monkey Island, like when your character is sneaking himself into the country via baggage claim. It's absolutely something a current day Guybrush Threepwood would do. The story is presented wonderfully with many of it told through animations to the quality of a Saturday morning cartoon. The hand-drawn art style is exactly how it should be. My only complaint is that they went with a 3D model for the main character, which was such a freaking strange thing to do since all the other characters and the rest of the game is in 2D. But it's a small complaint. 
on an otherwise great package. And the game handles the items you find in a similar way to the Monkey Island series. Not only do you acquire them and select them in a sub menu, trying out every item you have with everything else in the world until something finally sticks, but when you finally do figure out what to do with them, it will not only be an aha moment for you because you finally figured it out, but it always made me chuckle at how the items were used. You want great puzzles? You got them. You want great dialogue and humor? You got that too. And do you want a game that's worth 20 bucks on the eShop? Well, that's up to you really. Value is subjective, but I think so for sure. So I did say two, right? I needed two more games for this list. Iron Curtain was the first one. And then if we take a look down this list right near the bottom, Dream Daddy. Perfect. No! Hey, you know what this list is missing? Not a fly looking shirt, that's for sure. It's missing multiplayer. Lethal League Blaze is kind of like tennis, if tennis was actually fun. There, I said it. Tennis, but spliced up with all the attitude of Jet Set Radio Future, which I'm sure is a comparison many people have made. And oh my freaking gosh, this game is intense, crazy fun. You know that feeling in Mario Tennis Aces when you manage to successfully counter your opponent's special super blast? Yeah, well, um, times that by 100 and have it happen constantly through the matchups, and you might start to understand why after every gameplay session, I'm having to wipe the sweat down off my Joy-Cons. Every time you smash the ball, it builds up energy and momentum until it's ricocheting off the walls faster than even Neo could dodge. Eventually, you'll need pixel perfect timing to smash it back, otherwise the ball will hit you and you'll take damage. Each of the characters can hit or smash the ball in a variety of different ways, from the normal move set to character unique special moves. But there's a load of depth to this game too. What you're not seeing in this gameplay is me smashing the button every time there's a slight delay when I hit the ball. You can choose between catching or parrying the ball and based on what your opponent decides to do will depend on whether that ball is finding its way back towards your face or striking them down. It's up to four players, arguably more fun with two, but you also have a story mode and arcade mode if you want to play on your own. High action, intense fun. It's easy to see why this game is a hit on game nights. Coming back at you. Are you ready for it? The number one spot, the bestest game on the list, the dream daddy of Nintendo Switch eShop games. Forager. Forager is a game that I had no idea about until it showed up on the eShop a couple weeks back and guess what? I kind of like it. It's a little bit like Stardew Valley, Minecraft, and Dragon Quest Builders. It borrows elements from all those games and probably more. And those are just a few games that I've sunk loads of addicted gameplay hours into in the past, so honestly, buying Forager was a dangerous adventure for me. And just like in the before mentioned games, in Forager you can craft your own tools and weapons, explore dungeons, and even help out NPCs. The most unique and honestly exciting addition to Forager is that the items you collect in the world can be sold for coins, and you use those coins to buy the tiles around you, forming new islands. You have no idea what's going to pop up on those islands until you buy them, making the concept of grinding for more coins addictive. The dungeons are also a fun mix-up from the other crafting games I mentioned. You find them on the random islands you unlock, and inside you'll discover new items, enemies, and even a cool boss battle at the end. And there is even more depth to this game, including skill points to unlock as well as new things to craft as you gain experience. But we are talking about a $20 budget indie game here. For its price, there is so much packed in here for sure and you can easily, as I said, get addicted. But as expected, it's missing many key elements that the bigger budget crafting games have. You might find it a little grindy at times and you might even start to feel a little lonely while you're exploring these islands. But again, it's perfect for the price and I would love to see a bigger expanded sequel somewhere down the road. For me, I'm addicted to this new Switch game, and it's definitely a favorite new game of mine. Oh, speaking of addicted, I like that every time I use that word or make a video about it, a lot of you nice little woodies in the comment section say, well, I'm addicted to beat-em-ups. I love it. It's adorable. So I made it a t-shirt! If you want to buy it and support the show, I'll leave links down below somewhere. A real little woody would buy it. Are you a real little woody? I'm gonna stop saying little woody. Hey ho, let's go! That's it. Get out of here. I'm done. That's all the games. That's 10 of them. Technically 11 if you count Dream Daddy, which I didn't, but you know, it's pro it's probably, if you're still here for some reason, you may as well hit the tippy tap on that like button before you leave. Hit full left on that subscribe button. I'm also making that a t-shirt. A real little Woody would buy it for sure. Maybe I should make that a t-shirt. Let's see if uh, the meme sticks or if it's just something stupid I said once in a video. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check them out down below. Learn a new skill, never too late. Well, that's it for me. Ain't got nothing else to say. I'm gonna take this off because it's real sweaty. Bye, see ya. <laughs>